today we are going to talk about that seemed really high pitched. I'm Thomas. I'm Pip. T- today we're going to talk <laughs> about what to say in court. So um, the last couple episodes have kind of been my brainchild, and so we're gonna we're gonna pick Thomas's brain in in this episode. And What's kinda, left of it? Kind of kind of get a little more nuts and bolts uh, for you on you know I know a lot of people have hearings coming up in the new year. I have a lot of people reaching out that are saying, yeah, I got hearings in January and February. So we are going to talk about what to say in court. And I think this is, this will be good whether you have an attorney or you don't, because if you don't, obviously (laughs) it's going to be really helpful because you need to know what to say. But even if you have an attorney, this will help you understand, you know, how they come at it and why they're saying the things they're saying and why they're not saying some of the things you think they should be saying and all that kind of stuff. I think first of all, people that that have litigation coming up, it's scary. Yeah. And it was scary for me the first few times I did it. So there there's some nerves, but there doesn't have to be. Uh there's a way to kind of channel those butterflies into a very persuasive argument. Uh and the key really is preparation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to prepare your argument. Uh, and uh, what everybody does is they, well, ev- not everybody, but pro. Like, a large percentage of self-represented people. The self-represented, right. Um, a, a lot of what they do is, is they throw up just about everything they can think of about the case, and they hope something will stick. Something will, they'll accidentally hit. Uh, some legal issue that that'll work in their favor, uh, and then if that doesn't work, then they just complain and belittle the other side and and expect that to work. Uh, but a lot of times you're going against an experienced attorney, and you think, well, holy bleep, yeah, what you know? How am I going to go against this attorney? Uh, and the fact is. You have an advantage against that attorney, and that advantage is that you know the case. Right. It's your case. Right. So you know. You know know every little detail. You know what she did. You know what you did. You know what he did. Right. uh, You know what the kids did. You know every, factually, you know everything. You know how he used to hide the bottles in the, in the trash can and and how he, you know, the, the, the recycling would fill up with whiskey bottles or. Yeah, or uh, how she'd come home at three in the morning from the club every weekend. Right. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you know all that, and you have all these facts. But the thing is, you've got a twenty-minute hearing. Right. All right. What can you do in a twenty-minute hearing? Well, you can't tell all that. Right. You know, you have to leave some things out. And yeah. I'm sorry. Can I go? I, yeah, I don't, please. I don't push no, you no, no, track. no, no, no. But to add to something that you said, you said people. Um, what self-represented people do is they throw all this stuff up, hoping that they're going to hit the the right legal argument. I don't even think that is in the in the mindset of most people. I don't think most people understand that what they're doing, what you're doing in court, is trying to fit the pieces of the case into the framework of the law because that's what's going to right. get you the outcome that you're looking for. What most people do is they think, oh, well, if I'm just if I'm giving reasonable and I'm saying reasonable things that any of us would would find that, well, the other side is just ludicrous, then the judge is going to find for me because the judge is going to think that's reasonable and right. and agree with me. And, or they're a liar. You know. And it, it's not based on that. It's not based on that at all. That's right. that's not the strategy that the judge uses when analyzing your case. Right. So step one might be to, to find out what the law is in, in your case. Uh, typically, in a child custody case, you have this kind of amorphous, and everybody's heard this, best interest of the child standard, but nobody knows what that is. Uh, and in California, the very first thing that you think about in applying the best interest standard is safety. And and people don't understand this. They think it's a competition as to who the better parent is. Yeah, I have clients that'll come back and say, "Well, I told him that I didn't think that the kids going to this school is in 
is not this is not in the children's best interest. Right. And they start kind of slapping that label on all their communication. Right. 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 And it's yeah, the best interest style standard is an important legal concept to understand, but the components of it are first and foremost safety and 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 well-being. Uh so after you've gotten past safety, the question of the parenting plan doesn't revolve so much around the the competence of the parents as parents. Right. It, it's more about, well, how much time do you have to parent? And what developmental stages are the kids at? And these are important concepts. Uh, so you want to educate yourself a little bit on the law and, and your coach or your attorney can help you can buy some attorney time or well, you know Tammy knows all this stuff too so uh she could give it to you but once you understand the what you know, what the basic law is in the case another thing that you have to understand is what is the court's motivation in all of this so you know what's important to you you want more time with your kids or you want to have to pay less money, you want to, you want to get more money, or you want to protect the children from her or from him. What, whatever it is, uh, that's your goal. But you got to turn this around and think about the court's interest in all of this. If you give them too much information, they won't. You know, they their eyes start to glaze over. Yeah, it gets lost. The important pieces and the important points get lost in the volume of too much. Right. So you have to call down your uh, your arguments, uh, and we're going to go over that a little bit. You should start off with a very high flyover, like like what is you know if I could put this case into one sentence, what would the sentence be? Like that. My ex is a jerk. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a good through through line. That's not going to help you. It's a it's it's a common one that comes to mind. Yeah, it but, is. It's what it's what pops up for everybody. Right. So, uh, I was advising a client that has, um, uh, you know, basic basically the, the the parties are arguing over vaccinations, and each one has a medical opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, the parties are arguing about whether it's appropriate for this person, this young child, to uh, to be homeschooled, mm -hmm. uh, and they're arguing about. Uh, um, yeah. You know, whether let's or what were the there was a third issue. Um, oh, whether uh the child should begin overnights uh, under the parenting plan. Uh, so those are the three issues uh, in in the case. And when I was coaching the client, I said, "Well, you know, what what's the through line here? Okay, what is the thing that ties all this all the things together?" And the through line is that this child has a, an illness. It's a rare illness. Uh, and the doctors are in disagreement about it. So you have to tell, you know, everything that's, that's in your argument has to do with the effect of this illness on the child's ability to be in school, the effect of this illness on the ability to spend time with dad for overnights, uh, the ability of this child to handle anxiety, which is kind of what the thing, but it was such a beautiful through line that I was able to connect every piece of this argument to that through line. If you can find a good through line like that, then the argument is going to hang together. Okay. And, and what you do then is instead of giving all the details, oh, you know, dad, uh, kept her overnight, and she she had a fit, and then he gave her peanuts, and she had a reaction, and this oh god, no, you hammer away at this child needs to avoid anxiety, this child needs to avoid anxiety. Oh, and by the way, this child needs to avoid anxiety. Right, and you bring everything back to that, and that will it. Number one, it'll hold the judge's attention. And it makes you look child focused because you're concerned about the child's anxiety, not dad. What dad is or isn't doing right. in light of the anxiety. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is about this is a child focused argument, and 
it it makes logical sense to the court. Courts are very logical. You know, They're very more, analytical. Yeah, very analytical. We're we're trained to think in what I call syllogisms, like you know, a bachelor is an unmarried man. You know, uh, you know all men are mortal. Socrates is mortal. Wait. Wait, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. Right. You know, kind of that. If if you have all these conditions, then therefore you will have this connection. That's called inductive or deductive reasoning. Right. Uh, and we're big on that in right. in, in in the law. And one of the things you said about yeah. the argument hanging together, you know, we um talked we've talked a few times over the last few weeks over a DV trial that you had a few months ago. Right. And one of the things the judge said when she gave her decision in that trial was she said, I'm looking for does the does each party's story hang together? Right. Does it make logical sense? Exactly. Yeah. That that right. that was her exact words. And if it doesn't make logical sense, you're gonna lose. Right. Uh and so in this case, and I don't know whether she's gonna win. There's competing medical opinions in this case and uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons. But to you're think. at least giving her the best chance but possible. She has a better chance of of winning that issue if she makes. Uh, it, you know, you. I like to talk. It's kind of like leading a horse down to the trough to get a drink. You know, you you have to walk that judge down the path, the factual path that leads to the result you want. Right. Instead of what most people do is try to shove the water in their face. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, oh, here's the deal. Here it is. And it's like, no, you have to walk through all the reasons why and then let the judge draw their own conclusion. A lot of time we have we have competing through lines. Right. So we have mom's view and, and dad's view. And and the trick is to get the uh, the judge kind of nodding their head. Right. That you're telling your story and have that story grouped around a coherent line of reasoning. Right. Okay. So after that, after you've got your through line, uh, you want to limit the number of points you make. That's the hardest part. Yeah, because you, you want it, the, the temptation is to make every argument that could conceivably made. But a lot of times as an attorney, I have to make a judgment with, is this an argument that I really want to make? I mean, this this argument may color be, may be what we call colorable. It may be possible, but unlikely. And do I really want to take away from my through line by diverting the court's attention to this particular argument? You know, what's interesting yeah. about that is uh -huh. many, many times I'll get calls from people or from a client who has an, you know, because obviously yeah. I'm coaching a lot of people all over the United States. And so I'm, I'm obviously not every person I'm coaching is Thomas's client. I would say actually the vast majority of, majority of them are, are not almost, almost no one is actually. Yeah. Um, so our practices kind of run separately, but a lot of times I get a call from one of my coaching clients or somebody that found, found us online or whatever. And they'll say, you know, my attorney did not say the things that I wanted them to say. Right. You know, one of the people in my coaching program, when she first called me about a year and a half ago, the first thing out of her mouth is, and she was here in San Diego. So the first thing out of her mouth is, you know, I might be looking for a new attorney because the attorney didn't say the things that I wanted them to say or right. that I felt like they should say. And so I said, well, who's your attorney? And she told me, and I'm like, okay, very, yeah, very well good, known, good attorney, well known, competent. capable, competent yeah. firm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I said, well, you know, what outcome did you get? Did you, you know, and, and this person had gotten like 70% parenting time, and which is, I mean, there's no red flags in this case. I would have expected her to probably have a 50, 50 and she actually got a 70, 30. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, that's, that's a good outcome. Like, right. What what was your issue with your attorney if you got the outcome you were looking for? And she said, well, I just didn't feel like he said everything that he that I wanted him to say. Right. And I said to her, that's an emotional issue. Right. That's not what you're paying your attorney to do. You're paying right. your attorney to limit the points and decide which ones are the best ones yeah. for your case that are going to most likely result in the outcome that you're looking for. And he obviously did that because he got 
the outcome you were looking for. Right. And the way you're feeling is an emotional issue. You do not need to change attorneys. Right. The key is, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, somebody who stands for everything stands for nothing. Right. right. Have you ever heard that expression? Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, you, a confident person is somebody who knows what they stand for and knows what they want. Right. And then it, the rest of it just falls into place. Right. That's how you argue a case in court. Yeah, I said that to somebody this morning. Uh, I, I prepped somebody for FCS, uh, Family Court Services, which is the kind of the social worker arm of the court in California that, um, that we also call it child custody recommending counseling, where they interview parents and try to help them reach agreement. And if they don't, a lot of the counties in California, that counselor will make a recommendation to the court. And so that's mm -hmm. what we're referring to when we're talking about that. But I did uh, prep this morning for somebody, and um, that was um, one of the things that I, um, you know, pointed out to her right. was that, you know, you have to kind of know what you want going in. So what schedule are you thinking about and why? Why is that a good right. schedule for the child? You know, how does that give the child stability and also contact with both parents and all the things that the court is looking at, right. you know? So, um, so yeah, that's important. Right. I mean, there's so many more tips, you know, I mean, <laughs> but, but we, you can't give us everything at once. That's right. your top three, right? <laughs> Those, that's it. That's right. We're going to limit the points. No, if you do the through line thing, you, you're going to be so far ahead. You're going to be ahead of most attorneys because, yeah. because they, they screw this up too. Right. Well, it's a tough thing to learn. It's yeah. That's come through 30 years of practicing law. That didn't just yeah. come from right. getting a degree and standing up in court. That's that's true. That, yeah, that's entirely true. Yeah, it takes time to learn how to do those things. So, OK, so we hope this is helpful to you in making your oral argument in court um, and or and or understanding why your attorney isn't saying everything you think that they necessarily should be. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, don't forget to rate and review us and hit subscribe so you get notified as new episodes come out each week. If you're watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like button below and also subscribe so you get notified as new episodes or new videos are released each week. And thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. We'll grow in number, fueled by the seed.